welcome back this is session five and we're going to look at is anyone actually listening to what you've got to say the first thing you need to understand is why they might want to listen to you or why they should listen to you now if you're thinking that it doesn't really matter to you that this is part of your job this is something you've been asked to do then you need to rethink your, your thoughts on this topic because if you don't consider why they should listen to you then there's no point in you putting any effort into putting a speech together now it's pretty easy to know if anyone's listening if your audience is actually asking questions of you during your presentation but what about if there's complete silence or what about if you have asked that questions be left until the end of your presentation how are you going to know that your message is getting through there's obviously some different methods that you can use to incorporate into your presentation and these will give you immediate feedback and you might, if it's appropriate, be able to adjust your presentation according to the feedback that you're getting. But before we talk about those methods, I want you to do some planning about what you're actually going to say and I want you to think about in terms of your preparation, who is in the audience. You always need to keep in mind why you are presenting to these people today. It's the basis of how you should have written your presentation. You need to understand why you're the one giving out the information so that you tailor the information you give to this group of people. At, so at the same time you're thinking about the length of your talk, you should be thinking about who will be listening. Regardless of the size of your audience, you need to answer two questions so that you can get yourself thinking and understanding your audience before you actually look at whether they're listening to you. And those questions are why are they there and why are you there? And we're going to explore that a little bit more before we get on to some of the other methods. You need to think about who will be listening and how best to have them think about the information that you want to impart. Now this obviously happens when you're preparing your presentation. You also need to consider the level of knowledge of your audience and not just knowledge of the topic but, but general knowledge and comprehension as well. For example if you're presenting a new project give yourself plenty of time to both explain it in words as well as perhaps show your audience some of the things that you're talking about. Because some of us learn better when we hear information and others need to see things. And in fact, there's probably four general modalities of learning that we talk about. So let's have a look at what they are. There's hearing. So obviously that's going to happen in terms of you presenting some information. But not everyone in the audience is going to understand what you're saying because hearing is not their learning modality. Theirs might be seeing or visualising and the difference between the two is that seeing is where you physically show them something and visualising is where you paint a word picture and so you describe something and let them fill in the blanks if you like. There's reading of course so the benefit of handouts for any presentation because some people are going to listen to you but not take in the information in the same way as they would being able to read the information. And for some it's writing. So these are the people who take copious notes whenever you're doing a presentation and you might wonder why in every presentation you do you'll see a, a section of the audience will be writing furiously. That's because they need to physically do that to assimilate the information that you're presenting to them. With the increase in the use of PowerPoint and Keynote, we've fallen into the habit. It's got to be part of the action. With the increase in Keynote and PowerPoint use, we've fallen into the habit of putting down loads and loads of statistics and diagrams and charts in an effort to pass on all of the information that we think is relevant to the speech that we're giving. Now it is just not possible for people to take in that kind of information if it's slide after slide. just want to share with you before we go on a little bit of fun about using visual imagery for your presentation. 
Now this is about using pie charts and some of you may have already seen it, it's been around the internet a couple of times that I know of, but it's a very good way to show you how some people will see an image in a different way to the way you do and our brains fill in the gaps and then once an image has been explained to us it's very difficult for us to see it in any other way. So here's the image and I've just covered up the legend of it because we'll talk about that in a minute but it looks like a pie chart. It looks like a standard pie chart with some indication that the blue area is, is the majority of whatever it is we're talking about and then there's two smaller areas as well. Without the legend it would look like a pie chart and that's how you would perceive it. But for me now pie charts never look the same because in fact when you look at the legend it's not a pie chart at all, it's just a circular caricature of the sky and the pyramid with the dark yellow being the pyramid in shadow and the light being the pyramid in the sun and the blue being the sky. I defy you to look at pie charts in the same way again. And there's one other that I'll share with you because it's just a beautiful image again of a painting on a footpath but when you look at it it looks something very different and what fascinates me is that almost everyone except the dog and one man uh, are walking at the edge of this painting they're not going to walk down through the middle of it because their brain is telling them something other than what is actually there so just bear in mind people's perceptions of what you show them when you're doing things visually let's get back to topic your audience is the reason that you want to make a success of your presentation so you must ensure that your style your vocabulary and your message match the audience so they have the maximum opportunity to understand you now we're going to talk about your style in the next session and in this session we're going to talk about making sure that your vocabulary and your message match the audience expectations so that you are on the lookout to see that they're listening and if they they look like it's not doing it for them so to speak that you have an opportunity to adjust your presentation adjust your vocabulary adjust your message so that that information gets through what compels you to listen to a presenter and what is being said for me and for most humans it's the sincerity of the speaker now sometimes I don't agree or I don't like the idea that's being presented but when the speaker sounds genuine and sounds sincere not bombastic and not too forceful but when they're genuine and sincere in presenting the information I feel compelled to listen not compelled to agree with them not compelled to disagree with them but I just feel compelled to listen to hear the information and that's what we want to happen for you we want you to be able to have an audience that is compelled to listen to you because you are presenting in such a way that there's nothing else that they would want to do We're going to have a little review of how you've written the presentation because I want you to think about vocabulary and the types of words that you're using and I will caution you as I have done in the past particularly about using acronyms or industry speak you need to make sure that your presentation could be understood by someone who has the literacy of a 12 year old and now I know that sounds horrifying to some but that is the average level of literacy in our community these days. Knowledge of the subject of your presentation is vital but don't let a wealth of knowledge make you speak down to your audience so here we're talking about vocabulary and about phraseology when you have a choice between a short word and longer words and phrases use the short word and that's simply because that will always be understood and it'll maintain the attention span of your audience make sure that you can be heard comfortably without you needing to shout if you're not using a microphone when you are using a microphone get comfortable with it and its position before you start your presentation now this is particularly important if you are using a headset microphone a hands-free type one and you wear glasses as I do because there are numbers of different models around some are quite comfortable over the top of glasses others just seem to need the same space as your glasses need 
to attach themselves to your head and they will feel if you don't get them right over your glasses they'll feel like they're falling off they'll feel like comfortable some are the over the ear ones that don't fit properly with glasses the lapel ones are not quite so bad but they do need to be close to where you're in, in a, a diagonal line from where your mouth is not too low so not low down on your shirt so again it's all of that preparation beforehand to make sure that absolutely everything is right for your audience to be able to hear you because if they can't hear you they will lose concentration they will not pay attention and they won't be listening because they can't listen they can't listen comfortably if it's a handheld microphone make sure you know the weight of it and where positioning wise you need to hold it while you're doing your presentation and not move it around too much and the same for a, a standard microphone or a microphone on a lectern that it's in the right position for you when you're speaking or that if you've got someone speaking before you you know where to adjust it so it's in the right spot keep in mind why the audience are there why are they there is it compulsory do they have to be there are they interested in what you've got to say have they paid to be there is this a conference or a seminar where they've paid because they're interested in the topic and because or they're interested in hearing you and so they have a vested financial interest in listening or hearing what you've got to say so why are they there why are you there are you the subject matter expert is it because of the position you hold that you have to make this presentation whatever it is you need to understand why you are there and why they are there and then why are you talking to them three different things are you the one who's going to give them the call to action are you the best one to give them the information are you the one that needs to motivate them so why are you going to talk to them which is fed by why are you there and why are they there all of it relates to whether they'll be listening or not or how much they'll be listening or how long they will listen to you so knowing your audience means knowing who will be listening understanding why they'll be listening understanding why you're talking to them and understanding why they might listen to you deliver your information clearly and simply tell the audience what action to take observe the audience reaction adapt to the audience you need to be aware and have made the adjustment to your presentation if you've found out in that period of time that the information they've got is not correct or is incomplete or what they understand from the information is not what you want them to understand so you need to be able to be aware of those things and to have addressed them in some fashion or going to address them in some fashion in your presentation I know it's a lot to think about but once you've gone through the whole of this series of presentations that I'm doing for you you'll understand how it all interlocks and it will be easier for you to walk through the whole process adapt the content adapt your style adapt the length of the presentation all of that you can do you can't do it on your first presentation I'm not going to tell you that it, that's the case but with time with practice with study you will understand the signals that the audience sends you and you will have the sort of presentation you will have prepared the sort of presentation that you can adapt if you feel that the words are not reaching their target or you've lost their concentration or there's too many distractions whatever it is but experience and practice will get you to be able to adapt to the audience I'm going to go through some methods that you can use during your presentation as well as when you're writing your presentation so that you get some feedback on whether anyone is listening and what they're actually hearing when you're speaking. When you're preparing the content of your presentation, devote some time to questions that you can ask the audience. Now they're not usually ones that the audience will answer in the course of the presentation, but they give you an opportunity to watch for audience reaction and audience engagement. The questions shouldn't obviously be asked all at once. You don't just this big block of questions, but you can start your presentation with one as we talked about in the session on creating a great first impression, and you can end with one, particularly if it's a call to action or it's a challenge for the group that are there. If you want to gauge your audience during your presentation, ask a question and then give them the answer in terms of your presentation, but keep an eye out for the reaction that's happening within the audience. 
Now, naturally, we've got some favourite question words. Who? Who wants this? Who will do it? Who is going to make it happen? Why? Why is this? Why are we doing it? Why at this time? What? What can we do? What is it that needs to be done? What caused it? When? When will it occur? Where? Where are we heading? How? How does this happen? How will it happen? How is it going to happen? How do we make it happen? You can also ask the audience to take ownership of the information that you're presenting. So that's a, an extension of some of those words with questions like, did you know or do you realise? Because both of these questions have the ability to engage the audience individually with the information that you give them as the answer. You are talking to them by using the word you, you are directing your information at them. Back to pausing. I know we've talked about pausing in almost every session that we've had, but it is important in terms of your presentation being as polished and professional as you can make it. Pauses are very, very effective, and we have talked about it at length, so I won't go over the same things. But in terms of pausing here, where you're looking at whether anyone's listening, it gives you a chance to observe the audience. We automatically, as you know, pay attention when we hear nothing if we believe that we should be hearing something. If you pause, and even if it's just for a breath, the members of the audience whose minds have drifted a little bit will suddenly be brought back to you as they feel guilty and concerned that they might have missed something. And those that have been listening will see it as a preparation for an important piece of information that you're going to give. And that's why it needed to be separated from the rest of your presentation. Just lately, I've been watching an American called Jim Rohn R-O-H-N, who uses pauses to the best effect I have ever seen in a presenter. And I encourage you to have a look at some of his presentations that are on YouTube and you will see how much the audience is engaged by what he's saying, simply by his use of pauses. Because he pauses when you don't expect him to. He pauses, for my mind, at times where you almost lean forward in the chair to hear what he's got to say next because it sounds like it's going to be important or it sounds like he's still thinking about it and so you're going to get something that's really deep and meaningful out of what he's talking about because he's giving it so much consideration. So it's a very, very good style that he's developed and a very exemplary use, I will say, of pauses for effect in a speech or a presentation. Pauses are difficult to time. And you will always feel that it is too long. But a pause is never as long to the audience as it is to you. And practice really is the only way to be comfortable with using pauses in your techniques. And I would encourage you to keep practicing and use them because it is the way you speak naturally. You don't just shoot off all the information you've got without taking a breath. You do pause naturally. So take notice of when you're talking to people, when you're explaining something to people, how often you pause, where you pause, and write that in to your presentation. Use the audience reaction and their actions to reassure yourself that the information is being received. Look at the group as a whole, as well as individual places that you can distinguish. I do suggest at this point that you know the room where you're going to make your presentation and that you do a dry run. Even if you have been in that room a hundred times before, stand or sit where you will be for the presentation, look around the room, make a note of any obstacles in the room, columns or equipment or doors, and then physically turn your head from one side of the area to the other so that you become familiar with what you will see when you are speaking. By doing this before your presentation, you're less likely to be distracted by the room and therefore more focused on your audience and on your presentation. In a large room, I recommend that you look for a point slightly above the head height of the audience and focus on that for the majority of your presentation. It will appear to the audience that you're speaking to them without actually having to make individual eye contact because that'll be the angle of, the, of your eyes of where you're looking. Then when you want to have some reassurance, move to maintain some brief eye contact as you scan across the audience. And in doing that, don't focus on one person for too long. 
and make sure that you cover all of the audience not just a section that is automatic from where you are standing so when you do your dry run you'll stand there and you'll speak now if you're right-handed you automatically look to your left because that's your balance uh, and if you just keep looking to one section of your left all the time that will become distracting for the audience so make sure that you move out of that comfort zone even if you have to move from your waist and spin a little bit slowly don't just do an exercise and if if the volume on this is moving around a bit it's because I'm actually doing it while I'm t telling you about it and then if you're left-handed obviously you do it to the right hand side so most commonly you will if you're right-handed you will turn to your left and if you're left-handed you will turn to your right so make sure you practice to move out of that that little angle that you've got yourself into to, to cover the whole of the audience you need to consider whether anyone is listening to this particular presentation because you need to always keep that in mind whenever you're preparing any presentation you need to make any and every presentation relevant to your audience. Now I've talked in the other sessions about knowing who is there, knowing why they're there, knowing why you're there, why you're talking to them. All of those things are important for you to be able to get some feedback from the audience about whether your message is making its mark. So in summary, watch for your audience reaction. Ask questions in your talk so that you can get some reaction from the audience. Give the audience the opportunity to own the information in your talk by using the you word in your questions. Use pauses in your talk. Breathe evenly and slowly and we're going to talk about that in one of the other sections because we're going to have a whole session on breathing that relates to how you get the words out, how you minimize your nerves, how you keep your voice strong. Look at all of your audience and find a focal point in a large room. Don't look at any one face for too long. Let's go back to one of the questions that I have asked you in every session so far, and that is why are the audience there? Do you understand why they're there and why you're speaking to them? And then I want you to consider something very, very basic before you start to think about anything else. Can they? actually hear you. Now often we assume when we're in perhaps a boardroom or a smaller room that we don't need a microphone, that everyone can hear, that there's no other distractions. Now it mightn't be that they physically can't hear you but they are distracted by something else that's happening around them. It might be movement outside the room, it might be the position at which they're sitting, it might be the comfort of their chairs, it's all those sorts of things. So that the physical act of hearing incorporates a whole lot of other things that we need to make sure are okay so that part of you looking around the room when you first get up to speak is to make sure that everyone is actually looking like they're comfortable not looking like they are happy to be there necessarily but looking like they're comfortable that they're ready to listen and if they're not ready to listen if you feel that they're not comfortable then before you actually start to do the the bulk of your presentation you look around again after that initial introduction that we talked about in the last session where you've created your great first impression and look around again and make sure that they look like they're attentive that they're ready for what you've got to say and if they're not if there's still some movement if they're still looking in other directions or if they're looking down at their lap and they've got their phone open all those sorts of things then this is the time to actually have some other method which I'll talk about a little bit later about bringing their attention to you because if the first impression has not brought their attention to you then you need to change their state as Tony Robbins says and you need to bring them into the moment and we'll talk about being in the moment them and you in a little bit later on. So that about covers it for looking at audience reaction and if anyone's listening to what you've got to say and how much they're listening to what you've got to say our next session is going to be about developing your individual style. So we're going to look at how comfortable you are about the way you present and what, it is, what characteristics you've got that are good ones that you want to develop. We're going to look at learning from other people, learning from other speakers to see if there's characteristics in that that you would like to take on yourself and learn to incorporate into your presentation style. But we're going to 
ensure that you have developed an individual style that is suitable for you so that you can get up wherever and whenever and present as you. But just before we go, I had another couple of images about perception, about visual perception of images that I wanted to share with you. So enjoy these two and I will see you in the next session, which is about developing your individual style. Quite extraordinary what our brains will do in filling in the gaps, isn't it? That's it for is anyone listening? Let's join together again for the next session, which is developing your individual style. I'm Kim Bailey and this is Talking in Public. Mm -hmm.